Hello everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. It's been so long since we last talked. I missed you, I hope you missed me a little bit. Well, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, what I feel is going to bring you a lot of value, which is how you should actually be investing in 2022. Like, what's the game plan right now based on where we are in the market? You have a lot of different debates on YouTube right now. Like, it's getting fairly heated, right? You have guys like me, Kevin, that are predicting the end of the world, recession, all of that. Oh, wait, sorry, he flip flop again. Oh, now he's actually buying stocks. Oh, okay, sorry. Then on the other side, you have uh, Jeremy that's talking about buying stocks over and over again, right? And always buying as the stocks continue to go down. Well, what should you actually be doing, right? Uh, those are pretty much contradictory. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you should be doing and more importantly, why. There's very, very like credible, easy to understand reasons on what you should be doing. All right, so let me go over this real quick. A few years ago, I learned a concept from a guy called Dave Van Horn. I learned a lot from him about note investing, which is buying mortgages and then trying to work them out so that uh, people will start paying again. And what he was and what he was saying back then is that there's never a good time to both buy and sell at the same time. Let's say whether it's a house, whether it's a stock, either it's a good time to buy or it's a good time to sell. You know, sometimes it's going to be like more neutral, you know, it might be a little bit more in between, but overall, you're never going to find a time where like it's really a great time to both buy and sell at the same time. So let's go over a few asset classes and that's going to answer all of your questions about what you should be doing in 2022. All right, so here's a little game, buyer's or seller's market. I have a few different assets here and we'll go over them real quick, right? So first stocks, should you be actually buying stocks in 2022? Or should you be waiting and trying to time the market and uh, like, let's hope there's not a recession and all of that? Well, the very, very easy answer, it's a buyer's market. Right now, you should be doing what Jeremy's talking about, not necessarily his picks, right? I'm not like uh, condoning his picks or something, especially honest and stuff like that. But overall, it is a good time to be buying stocks if you have a more long-term investment schedule, right? Like if you're retiring in the next 12 months, then you have to be a little bit more careful. But if you're under 50 years old and you have at least 10, 15, 20 years ahead of you, right now you should be actually loading the boat. You should be scraping your drawers for quarters trying to buy one more share. All right, I'm gonna explain this very quickly. Right now, there are a lot of opportunities in the market, right? Almost everything has dropped 50%, 75% in some cases. Look at Triple Q, which is the NASDAQ uh, 3X ETF, all right? Just this year so far, year to date, it's down 33%. So should you be waiting? Well, you can, I mean, you can hope uh, that eventually it keeps going up and then like eventually it's gonna make new highs and then you can hop on the bandwagon, but it bottomed at $40 so far. So you already missed at least 20% in gains, right? How long are you gonna be waiting? Are you going to wait until like uh, you have so much confirmation that it's back to 80 bucks? It's up to you. I mean, personally, I would be buying some now. If it drops more, I would be buying more. If it drops again, I would be buying even more. That's what I did with Enphase and I lowered my cost basis to where right now I'm up 40%, right? And I bought it in the middle of, oh, the Fed and the recession and all of that. Right now is a great time to be loading up on stock. Look at the chart for Triple Q, dating back to 2010, all right? Pretty much any time it has actually fallen was a great time to be buying into it. Look at 2018, it fell. You should have bought it and it went back up. 2020, exact same thing. Every single time you see a dip, it's a good buying opportunity if you're more of a long-term investor, right? If you're just try, uh, trading in and out of them, then yes, of course you have to time it a little bit better. But if you have a long-term investing mindset, then you should always be buying these companies. So in my opinion, it makes absolutely, uh, there's absolutely no doubt that stocks are in a buyer's market in 2022. Now, we did have a little rebound, right? After the bottom in 
beginning of uh, February, I believe, late January. So uh, the stock market has rallied a little bit. I mean, you have companies like uh, Palantir went from 10 bucks to $13, but they're still so far from where they were six months ago. Palantir was at 25 plus and people like Kathy Woods were buying it for 26, 27, 28 dollars. Now that they're at $10, they don't want them. Do you see why that's not logical, right? The lower they're going, uh, these stocks, the more you should be buying. Not being like, oh, it's going down. Well, let me stop buying. It's exactly the opposite. So stocks are in a buyer's market in 2022. If you're smart, you would be buying right now. Like go out, make more money so you can buy more stocks. Real estate is the exact opposite. Back when I moved here in 2011, I made a lot of my money, you know, my wealth through real estate. Right back then, everything was depressed. If you bought into real estate, people would say that you're stupid, right? We were just coming out of the Great Recession. Everyone had gotten burned by real estate. But right now, 10 years later, you could have bought almost any house in 2011 to 2013, and you would be well ahead of everyone else. If you bought 10 houses, I mean, I remember in 2017, believe it or not, I bought a house for $35,000 in Memphis, right? So that exists. There are very, very cheap houses out there. Now, this same house that I bought for 35, I made a mistake. I sold it for 63,500, and in 2021, the guy that bought it from me sold it for 97,500. So in a matter of what, five years, the house almost tripled in price, all right? So we're not back in 2011, 2013, where you could buy any piece of real estate and it was almost a guaranteed win 10 years later. Now you have to be a lot more careful. There's almost no inventory, so uh, it's a lot more competitive. It's a lot more difficult, right? It's not the low hanging fruit anymore. If you own real estate, now might be a good time to maybe like cash out a little bit, right? So I have to give credit to Kevin. I wouldn't necessarily sell all of his houses, but it makes sense for him to unload some of them that are pretty much at the peak to where they can be uh, compared to the rent he can actually get. So real estate, absolutely no doubt, seller's market right now. Let's go down the list real quick, commodities. Well, if right now you're a farmer or you, you're a gold miner, do you have an advantage? Is everything skewed in your favor? Heck yeah, the prices are higher than they will ever be. Like when the supply chain issues are fixed, odds are, you know, stuff like steel is probably gonna come back down. After the war in Ukraine, wheat is probably going to come back down and like become more uh, realistically pr uh, priced. Lumber, same thing. So right now, it's a seller's market. Like that's, it's not a great time to actually go out and uh, buy as much as you can in terms of these commodities because the prices are higher. Like oil at 118 is not where it should probably be, right? Collectibles. Uh, you know, you guys know that I always buy Magic the Gathering stuff, video game stuff. Right now, the prices have doubled since I was I did my last purchases. So the market's cooling off a little bit. You know, you have Pokemon that really, like, the bubble burst a little bit. So that has cooled off a lot. But overall, I mean, it's some of my best assets. A lot of these have gained 40% in 2021, 2020, right? And now I would say I'm not buying as much, right? Just because of the fact that, you know, we're kind of peaking right now. So I would say collectibles are still in a seller's market. Cars, depending on if you're actually selling or buying, you can say that we are in a seller's market too, right? If you have a used car right now, uh, I actually seriously considered selling my used uh, Hyundai because I could actually be getting like 14, 15,000 for it, which, you know, makes almost no sense. Uh, it's pretty crazy. I drove it for 60,000 miles. Uh, in my opinion, it's not worth that much, but there's such a demand for used vehicles that the prices are pretty crazy right now. The downside to cars is that if you sell it and you need another one, well, you're going to be buying and, you know, so you're since you're going to be a seller and a buyer at the same time, it kind of cancels out because when you go to the dealership to actually buy another car, then they're not going to give you any discounts. So let's say that if you're selling, it's a seller's market, but you can also say that it's a buyer's market in terms of, uh, you know, if you're actually selling it, if that makes sense. So small businesses right now, if you have any skills that are marketable, if you know how to lay tiles, 
if you're a pressure washer heck i have a friend that learned how to do epoxy countertops you guys know what i'm talking about you know they kind of look like granite and all of that he's making a killing right now with that and he didn't have to even go to college for that he had a little internship for a few weeks at a company that does it he learned how to do it and now he's absolutely killing it with jobs worth a couple thousand dollars people love it and the supply is far lower than the, than the demand right so you can pretty much name your price and you're going to be booked every single week to do those jobs so this is a very very good time to be uh to own a small business and market your services so i would say that it's a buyer's market for us right not for the people that are actually paying for those services now when it comes to the mortgages which i'm kind of known for a little bit right that's how i started in 2011 i was buying second mortgages it's totally different back then uh for banks you know they were selling it pennies on the dollar like my best deal i bought for thirteen thousand dollars when the loan was a hundred thirty thousand dollars right so i got a really really good deal because the banks had too many they were trying to get rid of them at almost any cost so it was by far a buyer's market back then right but you flip the script, uh, the script to 2022, where there's a huge shortage of houses, well, these mortgages are selling at the absolute peak, right? You're not going to get it 10 cents on the dollar anymore. Like if you actually find something that's quality, it's gonna be 80, 85, 90 cents on the dollar. So this is by far a seller's market. Now you'll see where I'm going with this. Well, last one is the job market. Right now, jobs are plentiful. There's a lot more job openings than people to actually do these jobs. What that means is that you can pretty much name your price. I found a job in three days. I hate working. I don't want to be working. I would much rather do YouTube and, you know, invest in real estate and all of that. But right now, we have the leverage. Um, I have another friend, he just changed his job, right? He just upgraded from 70,000 to one or 30,000 plus commission. One of my friends in Discord just changed his job twice this month in March, right? Each time he got a pay increase of 20%. I have another friend that, you know, he's driving his truck, now he's making $100,000. So this is a very, very good time to be an employee, right? Even if we hate working, we all want to retire, but the fact is, it's never going to become this good. So this would be by far a buyer's market right now when it comes to finding a job, getting that income. So what portrait does this all give us? Well, 2022 is a year where you can actually really uh, make a killing just working at your job. If you have marketable skills, actually you know, starting your own little uh, business and actually buying stocks. Right? So this is what I am doing right now. The reason why I, you know, I could actually add like, let's say, let's let's put it this way, like YouTube. What would be YouTube right now? I would do, I would put it as a seller's market. You guys know that there's a lot of different creators that have quit YouTube because it just doesn't pay right now. Right? It quote unquote, if I didn't do it because I enjoy it, right? Kind of as a hobby, it's kind of a waste of time. I can go find a job and work one hour and make more than filming a video for a couple hours. I hope that makes sense. That's why you have so many YouTubers that are quitting right now. So YouTube is more of a seller's market, right? Uh, it's very different from 2020, 2021, where uh, you can make a video, you get 10, 20, 30,000 views, and you're making good money out of it. Right now, it's very, very difficult, and therefore, it's not really worth it as much unless you like enjoy it and it's more of as, as a hobby. So that's why currently it makes a lot of sense to focus on your job, maximum, uh, maximize that income, try to get a pay raise, uh, shop around for a better job if you can, start a small business, and invest in stocks. All right, so I don't care about like the whole debate about trying to time it with me, Kevin, and oh, there's a recession coming and all of that. We know that currently the prices are low and every single dollar that you find, you should be buying it. And if it goes lower, you should be buying more because opportunities like these don't last very long. Go back to 2011 to 2013 that I was telling you guys about. That's when you wanted to load up on as much real estate as you possibly could, right? 
Yes, at the time it felt bad. Let's say that you bought a house for 100,000 and you know things went wrong and all of a sudden uh, the house was worth 80,000. You would have felt really, really like stupid in the short term. But 10 years later, it was a great move. And that's what we're seeing right now in the stock market. This is a time where you want to load up on your highest conviction place. Not necessarily the most speculative ones, right? Uh, like I've been buying into Facebook. I don't expect Facebook to 10X in the next five years, right? But I'm pretty confident that it's going to at least double in the next five years from 200 bucks to 400 bucks, which it was in 2021. You guys know what I'm saying? Palantir, is it going to be uh, $20 in the next six months? I don't know, probably not, you know, unless they have an amazing quarter, but do I think it's gonna be $25, $30 in 2023 or 2024? Yeah, absolutely I do. So that's what I've been doing. That's why I haven't been uh, so much on YouTube is that right now I'm focusing on the low hanging fruit, which is job and buying stocks. All right, so I hope you guys learned a little bit today. This is what I encourage you to do, and I told you why, right? These are the low-hanging fruits right now. So you want to maximize your income and go and buy some stocks, your favorite ones, and you will be rewarded over the next few years. See you guys later.